We're going to bring in Texas Congressman Brian Babin, whose congressional district in East Texas is near Santa Fe. And in a tragic twist, Congressman Babin delivered a speech on school safety on the House floor the night before the shooting in Santa Fe. Congressman, thank you for being with us here. And I understand that in that speech, you proposed incorporating a, a secret service system into law enforcement, specifically referring to the threat assessment and protective intelligence system. Sure. So how would that system operate in a school setting? Well, first off, let me just say it's uh, great to be with you, Arthel, especially uh, uh, to be talking to you about this horrible tragedy. Uh, I did give this, and uh, I would urge, uh, first off, uh, that uh, maybe your viewers, to know more about this, would go to my, my website uh, and look, look at this speech. It was seven minutes on the House floor. I'd give the long version of it. Uh, but my condolences and prayers go out to the families of these victims. But it's high time that we go past condolences and prayers. We need action. And uh, this Secret Service uh, method uh, that you mentioned uh, absolutely connects the dots between uh, various sources of information uh, from various inputs and it ha does threat assessments on people who act absolutely self-identify as a threat. Uh, and uh, when we do that, uh, we can inter have an intervention here. Uh, we have analysts that look at this uh, at this information, and uh, let me tell you, when the first shot goes off, it's too late. We have failed. Mm -hmm. So it's time to to enact a, a, a program, a policy, or a method uh, that is for years protected our presidents by the by the Secret uh, Service, and also the Los Angeles Police Department protects celebrities with this same thing. It is a shame, and it is it is absolutely unbelievable that we don't have this same method uh, to protect our, our schools and our communities. So, for instance, this shooter had no criminal, criminal record, but he posted multiple menacing messages and pictures on social media. So under your proposed system, would authorities have clearance to interview this student based on his post before Friday shootings? Well, we are, we are absolutely working with the Secret Service. We're, I had uh, discussions with the governor's office today. We're working with our our colleagues uh, down at the other end uh, of the uh, Capitol and the Senate uh, to come up with, uh, uh, with this method and see how that we can empower uh, school districts, local law enforcement, the FBI, uh, any of these entities uh, that have information on, on these people that absolutely self-identify. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not an invasion of privacy. We're not identifying people. Uh, these people are identifying themselves with these red flags, as you just said, Arthel, mm -hmm. uh, when they uh, say, I'm going to grow up and be a school shooter, uh, or they've been uh, interviewed and, and uh, interrogated by uh, law enforcement 39 times, as uh, Nicholas uh, uh, Cruz was down at the, at the Parkland, uh, the Parkland uh, Florida shooter. And so we've got to be able to connect these dots, and that's what this is going to be all about. And then this guy, you know, he, he tried out for senior varsity last year. He dropped out of school before the football season started. And I'd imagine that's one of those red flags that authorities would be looking out for under your proposed system. Now, talking to you, Congressman, now as a lawmaker, I mean, would you be willing to draft a bill supporting Texas Attorney General Kim Paxton's idea of arming teachers? I absolutely would. I, I agree with that. We need to harden our schools. Unfortunately, you know, we, I've, uh, I've lived in, my, in this country and I lived in Texas all my life, surrounded by guns. Uh, and yet we didn't have this problem when I was growing up. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not a gun problem, but we have to protect our children. We've got to be able to uh, identify these people who would, who would uh, harm others, and they give plenty of signals off uh, that they are going to and be able to intervene when we need to. Uh, but we have to, uh, we're going to have to have some armed individuals. Uh, I've said for a long time that a, a, a bad guy with a gun the only way to stop him is a good guy with a gun. So the, uh, this is not a gun problem, though. Uh, we can't just have I, I, a knee-jerk reaction no, to no. take away our uh, Second Amendment rights. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're not going there in this interview. But I, I do want to ask you this, sir. Would you consider, just hear me out, would you consider implementing a state law that holds legal gun owners legally or criminally liable for their guns being used in deadly shootings? 
Uh, no, I can't because what happens if they're stolen? What happens if they're uh, they're they're legitimately? But what sold? if you're a parent? In this case, more specifically, this guy took his father's legally owned guns. You know, do the parents bear some sort of responsibility if their kid goes in because they're they're allowed in the house that they didn't have to break in and and get to this gun? But should the parents be held accountable on some level if their children are able to get to their guns? Arthel, that depends upon the circumstances. Uh, you know, if, if this young man had been uh, previously identified, uh, he certainly gave off a few signals. You know, there, there's still an, an ongoing investigation to find out just exactly what he had, uh, had done and, and, and what kind of red flags he raised. Uh, but it'd be hard for me to sit up here and say uh, that parents are going to be held responsible for something that their kids do. Uh, and it would depend on the circumstances. There certainly are circumstances where uh, parents would definitely be held accountable. Uh, however, this, uh, this guy was uh, 17 years old. Uh, these were not so-called assault rifles. Uh, these are... But it's still, uh, they were killed. He, they, he, you know, they, they turned deadly. But I understand the point you're making, Congressman. I mean, it's definitely... But, Arthel, let me tell you, it sure. doesn't have to be guns either. I mean, yeah, this can true. be done with a vehicle. Right, this could be but, a weaponized but we're... truck. Yeah, but we're talking about school shootings, and this is the ninth one uh, this year. So that's why we're talking about that. If I can, um, I'd like to get uh, switch gears for a moment, unless you have any final thoughts on the topic we were just discussing. Otherwise, I'm going to switch gears to the political topic it, of the it's day. It's just time. It's time to quit talking about things and start uh, implementing something that's going to uh, to be able to uh, protect our communities and our children. And it, it has already worked for our presidents. It's worked for celebrities with the LAPD. Time to make things happen. Well, we'd like to follow your uh, your track and course on getting that legislation implemented, uh, Congressman. So please, I, I invite you to come back on to, to let us know how that's going. You bet. And uh, producers, do I have time for this final question or not? All right, Congressman, you're going to be let off the hook. I'm not going to ask you about the president's tr uh, President Trump's tweet today. Well, let, me so. let me just say this real quick, Arthel. I support what the president uh, tweeted out. It's time to get, uh, get to the bottom of this and see some justice. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Congressman Brian Babin. I'm sorry we had to talk under these circumstances, sir.